What a beautiful day to beat a 1700 rated opponent on chess.com, wouldn't you agree? Let's check out this game where I played the Karo Khan against this guy, and I got some queenside play going on, got a little bit scared about his pass pawns, but I snuck in a checkmate towards the end there. It helped that I may or may not have been up a rook at that point, but no spoilers. Let's check out the game. So obviously, I've got the black pieces. I mentioned I played the Karo Khan, and that is e4, c6. And, uh, you know, usually white will play something like d4 to take the entire center, to which you, you know, would respond d5, and then there's the advance caro, the exchange, there's the fantasy variant, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff. But here white decides to play knight c3. Alright, that's fine, I'm gonna play d5 anyway, try and take my center here. He takes, takes, and now we just got a boring game. We got a boring little symmetrical game that, you know, we brought our knights out to the c3, c6 squares. We have our pawns in the center. It's, it's going to be a pretty mellow game, right? Look at the eval at 0.0, .0 ready to take a nap. But let's just, let's see where the game goes. Let's see where it goes. We get knight f3, bishop g4, pinning the knight to the queen, right? Trying to get my uh, bishop to an active square here. And we get, you know, bishop e2 blocking the pin. I play e6, solidifying my pawn structure. This is just the opening. We don't have to worry about it too much. We have h3. I go back. You could take the knight. I, I just didn't really want to. I like to keep the bishop there, you know, so a little bit of tension on the board. And we have bishop g5. He's trying to do the same to me, so I do the same to him by blocking the pin like he did to me. And we have the knight jumping into e5, and the first trade of the game happens here. So if you ever have a position like this, right, where you are pinning the knight to the queen, and they have their bishop blocking the pin, and they jump their knight forward like white does here, just make your life easier and just take the bishop. Like, the, the top two moves in this position are bishop takes e2 or knight takes e5, right? It's going to be one of those two. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to calculate which one is better. Just kind of come up with a little rule for yourself. At least that's how I'm playing it. I mean, grant, you know, masters might tell you that's a bad way of thinking, but it's where, you know, it, it's usually one of the top moves when I analyze it. So you just take the bishop here, and then after they recapture with, you know, the queen or the knight, then you figure out what you want to do, right? Just relieve the tension with the bishops, just because the queen and the bishop here, this little line of sight can make me a little... A little spooked, you know, if I don't uh, relieve it right away. So I take it, he takes, whatever, and I castle. No reason to, you know, take the knight here, because then if I do that, you know, he's taken with the pawn, then my knight gets booted, you know, and then, you know, I've got to deal with this, and I'm not even castled yet, right? So I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with that. So I just castle. Now I'm ready to deal with some of that. We have c3 solidifying the pawn on d4, creating a nice little pawn chain for white. And, you know, queen c7, just eyeing the, the knight here on e5. That knight is pretty annoying, I will say. I didn't love the idea of taking it right away, just because, you know, he takes back. And again, my knight gets kind of booted. I can, I can jump it, right? But now the game is just kind of boring, right? He's got this little thorn here on e5. My knight looks pretty, but it's going to get kicked out pretty soon or traded off or something, you know, knight g3. Anyway, uh, so what do I do instead? I play queen c7, trying to add pressure to the knight here. I'm threatening to win a pawn, right, with knight takes and then queen takes at the end. So he plays bishop back, kind of x-raying my queen. Of course I saw that coming. I'm going to play bishop d6 here, and now I'm staring at his bishop through the knight, and let's see what happens. A big explosion in the center of the board. That's what happens. So let's see. There are options for white, right? White could retreat the knight. White can take my knight, which he does. White could ignore this and just play like rook here and add some, you know, defense through this knight. Just bring a rook to a, a good square, right? Nothing immediate is really being threatened at the moment. I mean, I guess if if this, you know, I, I uh, actually, no, sorry, that is bad. I, th I saw it was the third top move. Uh, but it's bad because you do lose the pawn. Uh, let's illustrate that real quick. Rook here and knight takes e5, uh, whatever you take back with, you end up losing the pawn. This is just bad. Uh, <laughs> the reason I pointed it out, I was looking at the top three moves on the engine, and the first two are, like, fine for white, but then, yeah, the third. So white really actually has only uh, two choices here, and that would be to go back with the knight, defend the bishop with both of these knights here. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but you go back, you defend the bishop, and then what he does is, you know, take my knight here, and then I take the bishop, he takes my bishop, 
and then I take back the knight. I take the knight with the pawn, because I want to play c5. I want to play c5, get the open b file from, or semi-open b file for my rook, and try and get some queenside play going on, which is exactly what happens. Now, he goes knight h5 for some reason. I guess he just wanted to trade everything. But honestly, cool. I mean, I'm, I'm good with that. Because I, if I were white, I'd be trying to get this knight to swing around and blockade my c-pawn and try and, like, be very pesky here, right? Because if I do nothing, then white's knight is going to just be a very strong piece here on c5, just blocking everything. Uh, I can try and trade it off, but then, like, the pawns here are going to be quite annoying, right? Like, this is... I'm going to have to get to that, but that's not easy to get to because he's able to defend that with, you know, all of his pieces, uh, you know, like queen here, rook here, rook here. And what am I going to attack it with? My queen? And then how am I going to get a rook over there? Huh? How am I going to get a rook to a square defended by a pawn to attack this pawn? It's not going to happen. So I'd be scared of that. But none of that happened. It's all hypothetical. Uh, fantasy, if you will. Except this wasn't the fantasy variation of the Karo Khan. Crazy. Anyway, we have knight takes c6 uh, and I take with the pawn. Now I trade off the knight get it out of here, and I play rook b1. I should play, you know, like c5 right away, but I want to get my rook to the uh, to the b file, put some pressure on the pawn. Now, instead of playing like b4, b3, something a bit more active like this, white decides to be passive and play rook b1, which is not great. It's just not great. It's passive, right? If you're ever playing rook b1 to defend your b pawn like this, look for something else. J okay, just in general, look for something else. So now c5, and after takes, takes. Yes, white has three on one plus, you know, if you call this a pawn on the queen side, it's a central pawn. But anyway, imagine this pawn is gone. White's got a, you know, a three on one situation going on plus this weird center pawn, uh, <laughs> which normally would be scary. But the pawns are not far advanced at all, and I am about to get some big boy pressure on those pawns. So let's see. I swing my queen over. Hit this pawn on a2 real quick. He pushes it. Now we've got some light squared weaknesses to take advantage of. Now, I play this, looking to double my rooks. Beautiful. Now here, I should play rook b3. I should play rook b3 right away. This freezes white's pawn structure over here. Now, I was scared to do this because I've just had some bad experiences lodging my rook into the pawn structure like this, where, you know, it gets trapped or stuck there for the rest of the game. So I was a little, like, hesitant, you know, to do it in this case, but apparently it was best just because you don't want white to be able to play b4 and have the pawns, you know, all kind of defending each other. You want to just lock it in place and then get, you know, your rook, queen, and other rook staring at it and try to win it in due time but you know i slide my queen back trying to win it right now but that allows b4 and all of a sudden white is fine again now i notice a new weakness has been created let's go after it let's go after the new weakness so i double my rooks on the c file now i was on the b file and now we're going over to the c file trying to get this pawn which is now stuck you see my queen is kind of Patrolling the light squares over, not that, but like patrolling the light squares over here, trying to keep an eye on everything and keep this pawn from marching forward. And I want to get my rook over here if I can. And we see that in a little bit. I slide my queen back. Uh, the reason being, I'm trying to remember why I did this actually. I, I don't think I really knew what to do in, the, <laughs> in this position. Uh, I wanted to get my queen... Uh, oh, I, I see. Sorry, I had forgotten. Uh, I wanted to defend the a7 pawn. Because if I don't do that, and I go for this right away, then I just hang this pawn. And that's not great. Because now, sure, I can win this. Uh, except I don't, because it's just mate. Uh, this is a back rank mate. And that is... That's tragic. That's tragic. If that would have happened, I probably would have cried for the next uh, couple of days. But it didn't happen. Thank goodness. Uh, instead, I defend the pawn. And then I lodge my rook into c4, kick the queen away. And now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now I'm trying to win this pawn. Now he can defend it like this. It's kind of ugly. You know, why are you... What is this formation of rooks and, and queen here to defend the c-pawn, which is holding together the rest of the pawn? This is just crazy. 
Uh, but it also doesn't work because you have rook takes b4, and if takes, then you just go into this uh, this much better endgame, right? Where you're just going to win, like, all the pawns. But anyway, anyway, I triple stack, triple stack on the c file, and he pushes a pawn because, uh, you know, I'm not sure why. I don't know if he wanted to get the rook down here or something, but he, he pushed the pawn, you know, gets it closer to the promotion. And here I made, I, I made a mistake. I missed a win. The best move here is d4. Why is that the best move? Well, you can't take it because after all of this, I'm just up a rook. So you got to look at that. You got to calculate that a little bit just to make sure you come out on top after all the exchanges. My cat is here. Hello. <laughs> he wanted to say hi. Uh, okay. <laughs> if you own a cat, then... You know, the struggle is real. I, I've only had him for like a month or so, but he's the cutest little guy. Anyway, we have a6 and rook takes. Going back to d4, I got distracted by the cat. We go back to d4 and here, you know, white's got to play something like queen g3, try and offer a queen trade and reduce the situation down. But instead, you know, you can go and avoid this prevent any back rank weaknesses and just kind of slowly maneuver the position in a way where these pawns are stuck white's b and c pawns are just stuck you can never really take uh this way because the rooks are just doubled and stare at this rook here which has to stay there to defend the pawn it's all tied together in a very unpleasant knot for white meanwhile black's pawns are going to start marching down the board and rip open the king and the rook can even swing over and this rook could swing up and over and get some kind of king side attack going right switch over from the queen side stuff and go to the king side how about that anyway let's no no i lost my position okay let's go back we have rook takes c3 which is you know it's equal it's not like losing or anything but it's not the it's not winning you know but anyway we get all of this and he blundered right here i thought he was just gonna take i was gonna take and we would have an end game we would have, have an end game where i'm up a pawn and i try to win the b pawn and then maybe the a pawn and then try to push my pawn or you know just stop the pawns and push my my d my d pawn and try and queen it but that's not what happened instead he kind of uh I don't know what happened to him. He got confused. Uh, and he took the pawn on a7. I guess thinking that these pawns were going to queen and that I wouldn't be able to move the rook because of some back rank stuff, but I had calculated this too before I uh, took the pawn on c3. I calculated, or uh, yeah, here. I take, 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 and I saw takes. But it doesn't work because of takes. Check. I'm up a rook. King h2. Then queen back to e5 check. And then the queen swings over to c7. This just ends it for white. Because you're not going to push the pawns. And I'm offering a queen trade. If you take, then this is not winning. Right? I just... The pawns can't go forward. You just stop them. And if you try to push takes, you're too slow right so that don't work he tries to play on for a little bit i bring my queen and rook back to the back rank stop any kind of queen b8 funny business you know that can be a bit tricky and i just start pushing the pawns start pushing the pawns down the center of the board try and make a new queen set up a little discovery here so that after this move is played i gotta check 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 and then d3 D3 sets up a little uh, little trick, and that little trick is called a checkmating net. Now, the only way black can avoid immediate checkmate is by playing king g1, uh, but instead white plays this queen d2, and queen h1 is mate, which is really nice. The pawn takes away the only escape square from the king, and the queen just swings in here and, and checkmates the king. It's crazy. Well... Uh, if you made it to the end of the video, as always, thank you very much. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more of this. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, what you'd like to see more videos about. And uh, yeah, check out one of these. They're floating around up here somewhere. Have a great day, guys.